ಓಂ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಪರೋ ವ್ಯಕ್ತ ಅಂಡಮವ್ಯಯ ಸಂಭವ ಅಂಡಸ್ಯಾಂತಸ್ವಿ ಮೇ ಲೋಕಾ ಸಪ್ತದ್ವೀಪ ಮೇ ದಿನ ಓಂ ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೌಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರ ವಾವಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾ ವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂತಿಶಾಂತಿಶಾಂತಿ ಇನ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ವಿ ಸಾ ಸಮ್ ವಿ ಸಾ ಎನ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಶುಡ್ ದಿ ಎನ್ಲೈಟನ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಎನ್ಲೈಟನ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಶುಡ್ ದಿ ಎನ್ಲೈಟನ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಡೂ ಕರ್ಮ ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಟ್ರೆಡಿಷನಲಿ ದ ಜ್ಞಾನಿ ವಾಸ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಕರ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ನಾಟ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ನೈದರ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಿ ನಾರ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಜ್ಞಾನಿ ಕೆನಾಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೂ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಯೋರ್ ಒನ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಜನಕ ಜನಕ ಇಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ದ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನದರ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನೇಮ್ ಅಶ್ವಪತಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದಿ ಪುರಾಣಸ್ ಸೊ ದೆನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟೂ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗಿವನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಎನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಟು ಶೋ ದಟ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಗೈನಿಂಗ್ ದ ನಾಲೆಜ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈವನ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಬೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಫ್ರೀ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರೀ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ದೇ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂ ಟು ರೂಲ್ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ಡಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ ದಿ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸಬ್ಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದ ಕಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಡಿಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೊ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ದೀಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಶೋ that e it is not necessary that in order to be a gyani you have to just after be, becoming a gyani you have to go to the forest and live in a cave <laughs> it is more important to not cave into the pressure of not wanting to fight the war because here there is such a thing called duty and duty has to be performed no matter whether your preference is there for the duty or not so the dereliction of duty is not a very good thing and arjuna cannot afford to be a derelict even today if you have signed up for the war uh, to sorry for the military or navy or air force you have to do your time you have to do the rotations you have to go where they send you and if you say oh there is no war going on let me just leave it is called dishonorable dereliction but if you finishing the rotations finishing the time of the contract then you go it is an honorable discharge otherwise it is something you can be court martialed it is a it is a crime even now so too in the ancient times you could not do what arjuna was plotting in his mind very much to do and what was he plotting to do get out of this war very quietly just go out of this war and then just uh, uh, just to be uh, completely free of this duryodhana who wants that nobody dushasana bhishma who wants to fight against bhishma not me he said and i don't want to fight against any of these people and what do i want to do get out of here in a rush and so he was planning his escape and then uh, lord krishna catches him in a very uh, in an argument that he cannot get out of easily he says arjuna you are a leader because see if any roadside person spits on the side of the road or spits near a board where it says spitting prohibited this we see in india all the time they chew some uh, what is that called uh, not getting the word tobacco they chew to tobacco along with some kind of an edible um, lime lime and tobacco they chew and it turns the saliva bright red and it produces a lot of saliva 
That's what happens if you chew on this lime and tobacco. Beetle leaf is there, so many things are there. And so this bright red saliva, they cannot hold it in, they have to spit somewhere. <laughs> and exactly on the board which says, please do not spit here, unfortunately, they will spit right there. Now, if the person who is spitting is not an influencer, nor a celebrity, nor anybody famous, not a religious leader, not a politician, then what? No, not much is lost. I mean, it is, a, it is a nuisance, of course, and it is very uncouth, but not much is lost because they are not, nobody else is following them. Same thing with regard to like a sex scandal. If a person who, who nobody knows very well, just a regular cog in some kind of a wheel of the universe, decides to have an affair, even though he is married and has an affair, not much kerfluffle is there. Not much rough, uh, ripples are created. Why? Because it, few people will be scandalized and uh, maybe because of uh, doing something wrong, he may lose his job or whatever it is, but it's, it's just confined to that. There is no ripple effect. But imagine if supposing, you know, a religious leader does that, then there is a ripple effect among the followers. Half of them will be outraged. How can this person in whom we put the trust behave in this manner? How shameful, how disgusting, how awful. And the other half will say, well, if the religious leader does it, I will also do it. <laughs> and so the 21st, from the 21st to the 26th verse, the, the very important part of this Bhagavad Gita, very important portion of the third chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, we are given a new reason why not to violate the law of dharma just because one's ragadveshas are there. So, uh, this is the 21st verse, very uh, important portion. So, let us chant this verse. Yadyadacharati shreshtaha tatta deveta rojanaha sayat pramanam kurute Lokastadanu vartate sayat pramanam kurute Lokastadanu vartate name parthasti kartavyam Trishu lokeshu kinchana Nana vaptama vaptavyam Varta eva chakarmani Yadihyaham na varteyam Jatu karmanya tandritaha Mama vartmanu vartante Manusya partha sarvashaha Utsi de yuri me lokaha Nakuryam karma chedaham Sankarasya chakartasyam Upahanyami maaf prajaha Sakta karmanya vidvamsaha Yatha kurvanti bharata Kuryad vidvams tatha saktaha Chikir shuloka sangraham Nabuddhi bhedan janayet Ajnanam karma sanginam Joshayet sarva karmani Vidvan yuktas samacharan So, Yadyad Ajarati Shreshtaha. I lost the page. Yeah, here we are. Yadyad Ajarati Shreshtaha. You are not an ordinary person. You are a leader. Leader means Shreshtha. Shreshtha means Utkrishta, exalted. You are a Pradhana, as Adi Shankara will explain. You are Pradhana. You know, you do something, you set a trend. <laughs> Sometimes that is what happens. A celebrity gets a certain kind of a haircut and dyes the hair, half of the hair green. And what all the people who are fans, remember always the word fan is short for 
fanatic okay yeah so all these fans means those who are fanatically obsessed by this celebrity they will also comb their hair like this and have that waterfall haircut and then dye their hair green why because they want to look like the celebrity it happens even with uh, in uh, in some pradayas in uh, lineages i went once and then uh, saw somebody uh, some religious leader in a in an interfaith conference probably parliament of world religions so the leader had curly curly hair up till here shoulder length curly hair and a beard and a rudraksha mala just set just like that never disturbed it was pinned to the chest or i suppose here and so it was just lying exactly like this so the leader was just tip top like that tip top and very well dressed wearing white clothes mala curly curly hair and beard and all his male students were dressed exactly like that so we become emulators of conduct emulators of style emulators of uh, ways of being not emulators of what the teacher knows in fact that is what is to emulate what we need to learn from the teacher is is the knowledge that he or she enjoys but instead uh, one goes for the 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 surface level shallow way of being oh the teacher dresses like this i too can do that oh the teacher does that i will also do that oh the teacher speaks in this particular way i will also speak in this particular way and here saying this by bringing this point out lord krishna taps into a very important thing in the human mind which is what <laughs> sheep flock mentality everybody wants to be told what to do everybody wants to be led in a certain way we we need that the sounds that we make so that the animals will follow us this is how you know the the cattle the horses etc we make these noises so that they will follow us and the people need some kind of noises and the noises become the achara the conduct symbolically the noises made for the animals to follow become the achara the conduct of the person in charge and arjuna you are a leader and here i know one part of you is listening to the bhagavad gita with me and the other part is plotting an exit strategy out of this war even before it is fought so that you just don't have the you don't want to have bhishma's blood on your hands you will you just, so you think i i am the killer of bhishma you are thinking and i am trying to tell you that you are not you are the non doer but you are not able to see that so overwhelmed are you with your identification with that doership that you have forgotten what is really needing to be done if you are so into doership why don't you do what is to be done and refrain from what is not to be done because if the leader does what is not to be done everybody will follow half of the people will follow the other half of the people will think it very scandalous and get very confused feel betrayed and not know where to go they will feel extremely betrayed same thing will happen if you leave the war half the people will run away with you and the other half will be too stung too upset to be betrayed because you had promised them you would lead them into and out of this war and here you are leaving them high and dry in the middle of a battlefield and so so therefore you do not deserve to do this this is not for you so yat yat acharati in whichever uh, form in whichever manner the person behaves what person श्रेष्ठ प्रधान यद्यद आचरति मीन्स कर्म आचरति यद्यद कर्म आचरति वॉट एवर एक्शन द श्रेष्ठा टेक्स प्रधान एंड येशु येशु मीन्स द पीपल हैव टू डिसाइड हु इज श्रेष्ठ यू कैन कॉल योर सेल्फ अ श्रेष्ठ सो द पीपल हैव टू लुकअप टू यू एंड अर्जुन पीपल लुकअप टू यू 
And even if you think nobody is looking up to you, then at, at least the family dog is wagging its tail when you come in the room. At least there is one being who is looking up to you. But actually there will be many people who look up to you. You haven't really sat down and thought about it at all. You think you don't matter, but you really, really do. No matter who it is, you really, really do. Even that nameless employee that I talked about in the example who who had a sex scandal, a married person who had an affair, uh, you know, in the long run and in the in the wide run, meaning in the in the scheme of things, it may not in the larger scheme of things, it may not be inconsequential because there is not much of a ripple effect. But within that person's family and friends and employment circles, there will be definitely an effect. There is a betrayed family. There is an upset, uh, you know, community. They, they are wondering what happened. Why did this happen? How did this happen? They are just very, very upset. And so this is this is exactly how the, uh, you know, the Shrestha must not behave because of this maxim. Verse 21 is a maxim. And what is the maxim? Maxim means it has the maximum applicability. A maxim is that it's an aphorism that has the maximum applicability. And it's a generalism. What is the generalism? The generalism is that however the person of consequence, whether they are a politician, a celebrity, a YouTube influencer, a someone who has got lots of followers on Twitter, and uh, and so supposing if they say you know somebody who has a lot of following on twitter say oh this person is an idiot and such and such a person doesn't deserve to live then that person better get some security because there'll be these mad followers who may just who may just be foolish enough to come after them it has happened and so so like this whether that following is on virtually social media, Twitter, Facebook, etc., or in 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 the, in the life itself, in the in the regular vyavaharika everyday life, still the person of consequence is you know has an effect based on what they do has an effect, and then so yadyad acharati shreshtha ya pradhana yadyad karma acharati itaraha anyaha janaha Tad anugataha bhavati. So they are all, they all become followers. They all become followers. Anugataha means they start following. Yadyad karma acharati yeshu yeshu pradhanaha shreshtaha tatta deva karma acharati anyojanaha the other people also. Furthermore, kimcha saha shreshtaha yat pramanam kurute laukikam vaidikam va lokaha tad anuvartate tadeva pramani karoti ityarthaha here pramana is not uh, the technical term means of knowledge pramana means here some kind of a sankalpa some kind of an intention a promise an intention a desire that they have Saha yat pramanam kurute. Whatever sankalpa they have, whatever trend they set, anyaha tad anuvartate. People blindly follow. Like I said, there is a, some kind of a penchant for mediocrity. I do not know why. Among people, among the masses, masses and mediocrity go together. It's almost like there is so much fear. Do not be yourself. Be like somebody else. It's safer because that person has got away with it. So might you. <laughs> be like somebody else. It is safer. Then what else? Then uh, don't do this. Don't go here. Don't go there. Don't see this. Don't see that because that person is not doing this. Don't rock the boat. And even if you are blessed with creativity, you are blessed with some ideas that can transform the world. Do not share them. Are you crazy? <laughs> Parents will tell this to their children. Are you crazy? Stay out of the limelight. <laughs> 
Why should I stay out of the limelight, mom? Dad, because it's dangerous. Limelight means danger ahead, meaning you will be seen amongst a crowd of people. So what if I'm seen? No, no, no. If you are seen, that means they, if 10 people praise you, 20 people will be against you. And that is not okay. It is dangerous. And you may end up in the jail and all these kinds of things. The society scares the person into a certain kind of a quote-unquote safe and really, really boring mediocrity. A boring mediocrity. You look, you look at people who are in their midlife. That's why there is a midlife crisis. Because one has suppressed, suppressed, pressed, repressed, suppressed, therefore depressed. All the things that one wanted to be, one wanted to do. Why? Because the call of the society was to be safe. Don't be a Shreshtha. <laughs> Don't be a Shreshtha. Sheep flock mentality. Be, be a follower, not a leader. Nobody says, I want to go and lead. So somebody does something and then it becomes very, it becomes, it, it catches on. It helps other people. But we eclipse our own glory. We eclipse our own uh, greatness deliberately. It's like a story that is told, a regional story in India. There was an ember, you know, a coal ember burning bright. And she was just glowing. All of her was glow. You could see through her. It was just all glow. This is what she was supposed to do in life. Then she looked to the left, she looked to the right, and then everybody else was just all covered in ashes. She was the only one glowing. And then all the other covered embers who were dying said to her, what should they have said? Be our leader. <laughs> help us to shine for us. Help us to get out of this uh, covering of the ashes. But even if you can't, at least shine for us. That's not what they told her. They told her, oh my God, you, you should not shine like this. Look at all of us. We are all covered in the ashes. You also cover yourself in ashes. And then the whole fire is gone as a result. If she had agreed to do that. But she said, no, I'm just going to continue to burn bright and continue to give the gift of fire as long as this life is is there. You can join me if you want. Otherwise, I'm not going to join you the other way. Very few people do this. The story of the, the single ember is a, is a lesson for all of us to not cover the glory. But, but alas, as Lord Krishna laments, the glory of the people is covered. It's not that they have to rely on leaders, prophets, politicians, celebrities, YouTube influencers, social media whizzes. No. Each one is a whiz. Each one is a whiz. And, but not recognizing that, it seems to be, it is not an easier road, it seems to be more convenient to go with the masses. We are told when we are children, since we are children, there is safety in numbers. There is safety in numbers, we are told. And so you go wherever there is a crowd, oh, that everybody is going there, they must be right. Just because the majority goes there, the majority need not be right. Need not be right. And so uh, we don't recognize that. So if we look at people in midlife, this is what I was saying. Midlife always goes with crisis. Why? Because there was so much I wanted to do the person things. I wanted to learn Vedanta, but I felt like I couldn't. I didn't. Therefore, I didn't. I wanted to do this, but I didn't. I couldn't. We put ourselves in our own shackles and chains. 
But so being the case, that being the case, we cannot transform the whole society immediately. It takes time. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of, uh, a, what's the word for it? It takes a lot of uh, gumption. It takes, it takes, uh, um, it takes a, a leadership. So here, it's an entreaty to people who are in the position of this leadership. And it's an entreaty on the part of Lord Krishna for them to write their lives. Oh Arjuna, write your life. Make this right for you so that other people who look up to you are not misled. You can make bad decisions for yourself, Arjuna. You will bear the consequences. But if you make bad decisions that affects a whole host of people, that would be a dharma. That would not be correct at all. And so, therefore, you being a shreshtha, what do you have to do? You have to actually, basically, uh, do the do whatever is is you you are supposed to do. You are you have to do that. Your ragadveshas here cannot come in the way. Your ragadveshas cannot come in the way, and your ragadveshas cannot dictate what is it that you have to do, because you you are in an unenviable position or maybe an enviable position from where other people sit of having a position of leadership. So everybody follows. Lock, stock and barrel people follow. Therefore, what do you have to do? You have to do what you're supposed to do, which is for the benefit of the people. If you take a wrong step, that becomes the pramana for the people. Pramana means that becomes their de decision also. And that may be a very perilous decision for them. Like you leaving the war, leaving them high and dry to face the enemy for which they don't have either direction or preparation. That is a very cruel act. And half of them will run away with you. That's another cruel act on their part. And so you should not do this. And then, um, uh, then further he says, Kim, uh, uh, Yadi, Atrate loka sangraha kartavyata, uh, kartavyatayam vipratipattihi tarhi maam kim na pashyati, pashyasi. Vipratipatti means um, disturbance in the mind, doubt in the mind. Huh? So vipratipatti, you, supposing you are still doubtful, I am keeping on talking. So Lord Krishna must have looked at his face and Arjuna must have had a furrowed brow or must have been deep in thought like, um, I don't know, I'm not co fully convinced. Am I, am I really, is he really right? Am I supposed to be doing this? He was in this, this kind of a situation. Did not look convinced. Therefore, uh, Lord Krishna says, Yadi, if uh, Adi Shankara explaining the next verse, segue, the segue for the next verse of Lord Krishna, Adi Shankara explains by saying, Yadi Atra, in this context, if you are still doubtful, Loka Sangraha Kartavya, Kartavyatayam Vipratipattihi. So your doubt and your, um, what is that, diffidence, your hesitation is where? In the uh, with regard to the topic of the necessity for acting for the welfare of the world. Loka Sangraha, welfare of the world. Kartavyata, Kartavyata means the necessity of acting, the, the, the decision to act. Kartavyatayam, with regard to the decision to act for the welfare of the world, world even if you still have a doubt, Tarhi, then in that case, why don't you look at me? Look at me as an example. Don't you agree as Bhagavan, I am Shreshtha? Arjuna must have said, of course. <laughs> of course you are Shreshtha. Then look at me. What is that? Name Partha Asti Kartavyam. O Partha. O Arjuna, I don't have any duties. Why? <laughs> because I know I am not the doer. I don't have any duties. And then I don't have anything to be to do. Why? Because I don't have any desires. 
duty comes because there are desires. Because there are desires, there is action. Because there is action, then there is the need to manage the result of action. And because there is result of action, then there is further action because I do not like the results of action. And so therefore, I initiate more action. So then, yadi atra loka sangraha kartavyatayam vipratipatti hisyat tarhi maam kimna pashyasi. Why don't you look at me? I don't have any duties. Not only in this world, in all the three worlds, Trishu Lokeshu Kinchana Kartavyam Na Asti Me. I don't have anything to do in any action to perform in any of the three worlds. I don't have anything to do. Why? Because the world runs by my Sankalpa alone. My intention alone runs the world. I don't have do worship. I don't do anything. The world is in the form of laws which are my manifestation. I just let everything happen. Just sankalpa matrena. I just the desire or the intention comes and the intention itself uh, uh, turns into whatever needs to happen, happens. I don't run the world. Not only this world, but all the three worlds also, I do not run at all. I don't run this world, I don't run any world. And then further, na anavaptam avaptavyam. Anavaptam means what? Ungained. Anavaptam. Anavaptam na avaptavyam. Anavaptam ungained. Nothing is there in this whole world that is not gained. There is no list of things I ought to acquire. <laughs> Why? List is me. Things that I want are also what? Me. <laughs> the whole world is nothing but me. It's a my own manifestation. Like in your own dream world, everything is you. There is no need to run after anything, even though you may be running in the dream. But really, everything is you in the dream world. Just like that, in Ishwara's world, everything is Ishwara. And everything is Bhagavan. And everything is me. Everything belongs to me, even if you, if that's a big stretch. Everything belongs to me. It's, it's just me alone. And then, so therefore, na anavaptam avaptavyam, there is. Nothing that I can say is ungained. Nothing that is ungained that is to be gained. And by extension, nothing that I have gained by mistake that I need to get rid of, like grey hair and what else, you know? Grey hair, poverty or whatever it is. Nothing I, I want to get rid of, nothing I need to gain. And so, Na anavaptam, ap to gain, aptam uh, uh, gain, Ana, uh, anaptam ungain, an plus av plus aptam, anavaptam, anavaptam na, aptavyam na, nothing that is ungained, nothing to be gained and then by extension nothing to get rid of that I have gained by mistake and nothing to protect which has already been gained. In other words, no yoga, no kshema. Yoga kshema rahitoham. I am, I enjoy yoga kshema rahityam. Yoga kshema rahityam, I fully enjoy. So enjoying yoga kshema rahityam means free of being a collector of things, of objects, of desire, or free of being the protector of the things that I have, that I have desired, I since I don't have that, there is no need for action. All action comes from desire. And since there is a total absence of desire, there is no do worship, there is no impetus for action at all. Impetus for action not being there. What should I have been doing? I should have been sleeping. I should have forgotten this world and goes, go, gone somewhere else. But I don't do that. Look at me. 
वर्त एव हि कर्मणि आई एम स्टिल एंगेज इन एक्शन अर्जुना लर्न समथिंग फ्रॉम दिस लुक even now i am do i am multitasking <laughs> with one hand i am i am driving the chariot another you know with my mouth i am teaching i am driving the chariot i am teaching i am dodging the arrows of your adversaries so that they don't come and hit you and then i am ducking when when karna is sending the nagastra i am making the chariot duck so that it misses you and so like this there are so many things i'm doing all these things i'm doing and then so therefore what therefore you 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 also have to learn from me that even though i am free of do worship i still do see there is a very big confusion in the minds of most of the people and what is this confusion it's like work is bad in order to relax what should i do i should do nothing <laughs> but one is not really capable of doing nothing because atma gyanam is not there and so and then uh, even after atma gyanam it's not necessary that you you just sit quietly that is the whole point here so therefore one has this very strange idea of work and relaxation Five days work, 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 work. Two days collapse. Then again, five days work, 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 work. Two days collapse. And then three fifty days work, 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 work in the year. And then fifteen days collapse. <laughs> And then what? Fifty years of life work, 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 work. And then after that, retire. i don't want to do the work i want to enjoy why because i the work i feel is something that i have to do it's not something that i want to do here the difference is completely erased obfuscated the difference is not at all there what he doesn't have to do anything the lord krishna the lord in the form of here lord krishna doesn't have to do anything still does why for the sake of other people pujya swami ji was asked by a small child 8 <laughs> 8 year old child said swami ji what's your favorite activity she had been you know looking at swami ji and she had a school project school project to follow somebody important and write down what do they do the whole day no not the whole day but a few hours she was supposed to sit there so she wanted to do follow swami ji and swami ji allowed her to sit there for 4 hours and take notes and then she asked what is your favorite activity she had to do a little interview of swami ji and so swami ji gave a wonderful response which was a beautiful teaching he said i have grown to like whatever it is that i have to do because i can't always do as i like <laughs> this is a very wonderful thing being a shreshtha being a leader and uh, daring to follow one's dreams daring to not be part of the sheep flock mentality comes with certain responsibilities you naturally become somebody that other people look up to and if other people look up to you it's not that they are silently following you some may openly rebel some may want to be convinced some people have lots of issues problems and then you cannot say you know i didn't sign up for this <laughs> you don't have to sign up for it it is in your lap you didn't sign up for it yes true you didn't sign up for it but bhagwan signed you up for it <laughs> you signed up for it in your last karma because in the karma of the last life in a way you signed up for it and then what it is here in your lap what are you going to do it's like that monk uh, where the villagers threw one baby at this monk there was this japanese uh, zen monk lived on top of a hill highly revered and one young girl used to come and clean and uh, for him and leave some flowers and fruits and uh, food for him and then suddenly the girl got was found to be pregnant 
she was thrashed by the people so much and she wanted to protect her lover because she knew he would also undergo the same fate. So she said, when, when asked who the father of the baby was, she pointed to the, the mountain and put the blame on the monk. So the people were so irate. Here was a Shreshtha. Here they were looking up to him. And then what? Then he has let the people down. He has ruined this young girl's life. They all came. They thrashed him also. And then when the baby was born, they threw the baby in his lap and said, you take care of it. It's your baby. Why should men get scot free and the women should, um, you know, have the burden of raising the child and spoiling their rep reputation, their reputation getting ruined and their chances of marriage, um, especially in Ep like ancient times in ancient Japan getting ruined. So the um, first the monk used to go for bhiksha for himself. Now the monk has to go for bhiksha for him and the baby has to beg for some milk for the baby. And all the people, most of the people in the village, disgusted, they shut the doors. Even when he saw, saw him coming from there, when they saw him coming, they, they would shut the door, shut the windows, pretend to be not at home. And so he had to go to other village. He had to cradle the baby on his lap. He had to soothe it, put it to sleep, feed it because he had, he suddenly, this baby literally fell into his lap. Six months later, the girl confessed. She couldn't handle it. She couldn't, her conscience would not let her sleep at night. So she said, I have fallen in love with this person with whom our family has a feud. That's why I was afraid to tell. I have done a terrible thing by maligning this monk's name and driving him out of the village. So the whole village uh, went to in search of the monk. He was not, he had not gone very far. How, how far can you go with a baby? So he had, he was just wandering around asking for food. They brought him back to his place on the, on top of the mountain and they asked his forgiveness. And then they said, you please give us back the baby. These are the two young people who have agreed to marry each other and it is their child. And they were afraid to tell because of some other, our own foolish wars and feuds that were going on. Give back the baby. Did he say, no, I'm now too attached to the baby? No, he gave back the baby. So whatever falls into the lap has to be done. Even by an ordinary person and even by the um, uh, 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 the non ordinary person has to be done and then what then nothing nothing much to say here it's just that if you are a shreshta if people start looking up to you see this is another reason why one covers one's own glory because one feels like one doesn't have it in in their hearts to be available to people but really, that's how one grows. It's a win-win situation. When one is available to people, one is naturally growing out of a sense of why me, why I have to be like this, who am I? All these kinds of uh, obsessive, compulsive thoughts, fears. One is naturally growing. Even if one wasn't given something in childhood, giving that to somebody else, is actually very fulfilling. In a way, since everything is one, what you lacked when you give to others, you are also feeding yourself. These people don't understand. People say, I wasn't given compassion, so how can I be compassionate to another? There is a sense of truth there, but it's on the very, very surface level, the empirical level. On the empirical level, the inner child can say this, that I don't know how to love. Nobody gave me love. They put me out in a cardboard box on the street when I was small. What mother? What father? They, the, the mother was, you know, M silent. Mother was other. <laughs> and what was the father? Farther and farther away from my awareness because I haven't seen the father. I don't know who the mother is. And here I am. I have brought myself up. And, and somehow I am 
Why should I be compassionate to others? How can I be compassionate to others? Yes, there is a modicum of truth here. And what is this modicum of truth? That that one part of this person does not know how to be compassionate, does not know how to love, and then the and then is so overwhelmed by one's own needs that one cannot really come out of that uh, conundrum and that that glub 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 that being immersed in one's own needs, drowning in one's own desires and needs and drowning in one's own pain to be able to see another. Yes, this is, but this is not the ultimate truth. This is Prati Bhasika. This is Mithya within Mithya. Empirically, what is true is that in every being, compassion is hardwired. Empathy, hardwired. The, the ability and the desire to reach out to another, hardwired. It's already there. It's already there. So if I'm able to set this aside consciously, if I'm able to tell this baby that I will be a mother to you, I will be a father to you, and then one of the ways of mothering the inner child is to mother and father the whole universe, then your inner child is naturally included in that compassionate, in that compassion. It's not like you suppress the inner child and then you know, you, you mother the whole universe, you, you be a parent to the universe, no, that doesn't work, that's avoidance, that's like a sham, that's not really compassion. Compassion is that which overflows without any reason and when, when you bathe the universe with that and you bathe your own inner child with that, there is a transformation, there is that transformation. So here, in, in being a Shreshtha and in being and doing whatever it is that you are supposed to do, there is a transformational uh, property. There is a transformation potential. So just like me, I don't have to do anything. I don't need to gain anything. I am beyond and above all this whole universe. Yet, I do things. Yet I help people. Somebody says, Krishna, where are you? I say, I'm coming. <laughs> Wait, I'm coming. Little bit more prarabdha karma is there. <laughs> I will help you. I'll help you overcome it. Hang in there. So this is what I do. I do this because I can, you know, because I can. And why, do I, why can I do this? Because I, I, I don't want anything for myself. The more one grows out of the desires, the more one becomes a Shreshtha, an exalted person by the worldly standards, is one who is successful in fulfilling the Ragadveshas. That is what we call a, a successful person. Who is a successful person in the world? A Shreshtha. Oh, they, they wanted a house, they have a mansion, they wanted this, they have got that, anything they want they can get. They are wealthy, they are, they are all this. So the person who has a command over their desires, that is what is seen as a successful person. But here, who is the successful person? The one who has grown out of the desires is a successful person. Because I'm not dependent upon those desires. I don't become a beggar to those desires. I don't become a slave to those desires in order to leave my, lead my life. That is the Shreshtha. In the Bhagavad Gita, an exalted person is the one who is more and more free of desires. And Arjuna, you need to be like that. Forget Ashwapati, forget Janaka, we don't know whether they, they existed or not. When they existed, we don't know. What they did, we don't know. But you see me here. You see me. You see Krishna here. Lord Krishna says, you see me. I don't have to do anything. Have you seen me hankering after anything? No. Oh, as a child, you stole butter. That was a different thing. That again is very symbolic. Krishna was not hungry for butter. Butter is that which is churned from the milk with action. With a rope and a churning rod they churn. So what is that action? <laughs> that is the churning action. 
and the result of action is butter. So butter is karma phala. If the Lord is eating up your karma phala, that means you are free. Your prarabdha is gone. This is wonderful. Your prarabdha is becoming neutralized. So this is all symbolic. We can't take it uh, uh, literally. But then Lord Krishna say, himself declares, I am Bhagavan. I have no desires at all. I have nothing to gain. I have nothing to get rid of. I have nothing to protect that which I have gained. And I have nothing to, um, uh, uh, nothing to let go of that which I have accidentally gained and which I don't want. None of that being the case, I should just be on a permanent holiday. But I am not on a permanent holiday. I am busier than you ever expect. And then Bhashya, let us see. Oh, first let us, yeah, we have seen this uh, verse. So let us see the Bhashya. Name mama partha asti na asti na vidyate kartavyam trishu api lokeshu kinchana kinchidapi straightforward there is nothing in this whole world that I have to do kasvat why na ana anavaptam apraptam avaptavyam prapaniyam there is nothing that is unattained which is to be attained I don't have an agenda. I am Krita Kritya. Kritam Krityam Krita Krityam Kritam Jena. By whom everything that has to be achieved has been achieved. I am a fulfilled being. I have nothing to do. Still Varte Tathapi Varte Eva Chakarmani Aham. Still I keep on being in action. And then verse number 23 he says, Yadi. He, uh, indeed, if I did not uh, engage in action, jatu, jatu means um, uh, uh, at any time, jatu at any time, if at any time I did not engage in action, karmani, atandritaha, atandandra means alasa, laziness, sloth, la, uh, you know, some kind of a languor. Here, if I did not uh, do the work actively without uh, recourse to a certain kind of languishment, then a uh, languishing, then mama vartma anuvartate manushyaha partha sarvashaha. Then what would happen if I just sat there and if I just slept all the time, if I just chewed tobacco, <laughs> if I just did something or the other, and if I did not completely apply myself to help the people throughout. Mama Vartma Anuvartante. Go back to verse number 20. Yadyad Acharati Shreshtaha Tatta Deva Itaro Janaha. So however the Shreshtha behaves, all the other people also behave in the same way. And so uh, here also same exact thing. Then uh, um, mama Vartma Vartman, just like Atman Vartman, uh, Atma Vartma, Vartma is Marga, the path, my path, my road, everybody will follow and they will also all start languishing. Oh, it's raining here, it's aching there and because if you just can, if you sit down for some time, everything, all hurts and pains will come out. Who is there for whom something is not aching? It is there. Ache is there. Physical ache will be there. Mental ache also may be there. Emotional ache will also be there. But the way to grow out of it is in doing what one is supposed to do and in refraining, refraining from what one is not supposed to do. So if I am not doing this, then what will happen? Mama Vartma Anuvartante Sarva Sarvashaha Sarvashaha means in all ways. Sarvaihi prakaraihi mama vartma anuvartante manushyaha he partha. O Arjuna, all the people will follow my path in every manner. If I don't, you know, if I just sit and uh, languish, they will also sit and complain. If I just uh, waste the day, they will also waste the day. I can afford to waste the day because there is nothing I need to attain. They cannot afford to waste the day because they think they have a lot to accomplish. So what do I do? I don't chide them. I don't say, oh, you fools, why are you going here and there? No, 
that comes in verse 26, 326, we will see this in more detail. I follow along. Somebody says, oh, I want to build a big house. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll help you. I'll help your sankalpa. Pray, I will help you. Somebody says, I want a new job. This job is not good enough. Go ahead, apply for it. Somebody says, I want to go bungee cord jumping. And what will I, as Lord Krishna say? <laughs> yes, I can see why. Last life you were a spider. Go ahead, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> and so I, I, uh, I myself am engaged in action as a positive example to the people so that they also don't fall into inaction when they are not ready. Inaction means what? Inaction means, you know, there is, there is a, a, you know, following one's ragadveshas and not doing what one is supposed to do and doing what one is not supposed to do. That is inaction. Inaction is not just sitting quietly and meditating. That is not what is being talked about here. And so, this is what, you know, mama margam anuvartante sarve manushyaha sarvashaha sarvaihi prakaraihi. If I don't engage in action, everybody will follow a suit. Supposing if then Arjuna said, so what? Tathacha ko doshaha iti aha. Suppose, you know, Arjuna said, so what? Let them follow. Let them follow your lead or let them not follow, you know, you just relax, let the whole universe of people relax, let them not do anything, let them not fulfill their prarabdha, let them not do anything, what is the, the problem in that? And then the explanation then is given in verse number 24. Utsi deyuhu ime lokaha, Utsi deyuhu means will be as good as destroyed. These worlds, these three worlds, will be as good as destroyed. Na kuryam karma chedaham. If I don't perform action, the three worlds will get destroyed. And furthermore, sankarasya chakartasyam. I will be the cause of confusion. Sankara means mix up. Mix up about priorities. Mix up about uh, what is to be done. Mix up about what is not to be done. All these things I will be the, the initiator of. So because of this mix-up, etc., this is what I will do. And then because, because I will cause the mix-up everywhere, people will not will be confused. They don't know what their duty is. They don't know what their priority is. They will go towards adharma. That's how I will destroy these people. And destroying these people, then because of the confusion, half the people will be confused. The other half will go against dharma because that's the easiest thing to do. And then they will all be destroyed. Utsi deyuhu vinashyeyuhu will be destroyed. Ime, ime means what? Ime sarve lokaha. Loka sthiti nimittasya karmanaha abhavat. Why will they be destroyed? Adi Shankara says, because of the absence of the karma which is leading to, the, to their existence, which is conducive to their being. Because as, as I am Loka, so, uh, I mean, I am Loka Srishti Karta, I am the, the manifester of the universe. Then what is my supposedly the so-called duty if, uh, for the people? My so-called duty is to take care of this universe. If I don't take care of the universe, the universe will be destroyed because of the absence of sthiti karana nimitta karyam. Because of the loka sthiti nimittasya karmanaha abhavat. Because the karma conducive to their existence. Like who is going to make sure that they do whatever they are supposed to do? I'm not doing anything and they will not, they will not do on their own. Therefore, I set an example. Otherwise, the people will be, half the people will be destroyed. Destroyed means virtually, meaning they will go towards adharma and the other half of the people will have sankara, confusion, mix up. And then, so that he's going to say, kimcha sankarasya kartasyam tena karanena Upahanyam imaf prajaha. Praja. So, the, because of this, these reasons, I will as though destroy my own people. 
all these people who look up to me, I am myself destroying them. Prajanam anugrahaya pravrittaha tad upahatim upahananam kuryam ityarthaha. That means what? I would be responsible. I will become responsible for the confusion of, and then uh, the destruction of the people. Ityarthaha mama Ishwarasya ananurupam apadhyeta. So therefore, while endeavoring to, uh, while trying to be there for the welfare of the people, I should be instead bringing about their ruin. This is very unbecoming of me. Who is this me? Ishvara. <laughs> yeah. What is Ishvara supposed to do? Ishu palane, the word Ish means to take care of, to protect, to rule, to overlord, to show the people the way. And I would not only be, be ruining them, but I would be ruining my own definition of who I am. I have taken on a role. I don't have anything to do, but as, as my role, I have things to do and I should be doing that. And that's why I keep on doing that. Otherwise, the very people I endeavor to delight and protect, I will be bringing about their ruin. And who are the, these people? None other than me. They are all Atma. <laughs> and so instead of bringing them closer to me, I'm casting them away from me. And then I'm consigning them to um, cycles and cycles of rebirth. And and sorrow even in each and every life. More we'll see next time. Next week there are no classes. So two weeks from now this class will meet. So to the other classes, the uh, Bhashya classes for Taitriya Upanishad. Om Pur Namadav Pur Namidam Pur Nath Pur Namudachyate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari hi om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari hi om Tat Sat